What was the first thing that went through your mind when you saw that puck go in in overtime? You were right there. Coming out in front, shot, scores! Ultimate happiness, relief, jubilation. One of those moments that I think I'll always remember, but it just happens so fast and it ends so fast. They finally caught lightning in a bottle! You almost can't believe it. It's kind of one of those things where I'm just so happy for everybody. The puck went in and we got to experience that win together. Alfred Tavares behind the net and shoots and scores! And the Maple Leafs have broken the 19-year curse. At what point did you start to see what was going on in Toronto? You check your phone after a game and you get calls and texts from friends, but you know, also online you see the videos of the people in Maple Leaf Square. And we have been talking about that over the course of the series and our fans and all the people that are there when we're on the road, the amount of support that we get is pretty incredible. And uh, I mean, to watch those reactions is, is cool. And I mean, it just, just gives you chills and you know, really makes you feel like you just want to win for them. Your dad grew up in Hamilton, a Leaf fan. Uh, how excited were your mom and dad? I think, you know, over the course of your career, uh, there's always people in your in your life that experience the wins and the losses with you. And, you know, at times I feel like maybe they take the losses harder than we do. It's just that kind of feeling of being happy for them. You know, it's almost like they're relieved and they can breathe and they can move on and, you know, continue on with their lives just uh, with that kind of off their chest. And when I talk to them on the phone, you know, I'm just happy for them. And with our first selection in the 2012 Entry Draft, the Toronto Maple Leafs are pleased to select from the Moose Jaw Warriors, Morgan Riley. As the longest serving Leaf, you've seen more playoff disappointment than anybody else. When you think back to the disappointments, I mean, was there one that stung the most? I think it changes. Um, I think each year, if you go back to our group's first opportunity to play in the playoffs against Washington, and then I mean, you go to now, you know, truly everyone in sequence got a little harder and a little bit more painful. And I think that our group was able to learn from those experiences and those losses and grow, um, you know, stick together and have the mentality of, you know, we're not gonna just give up, we're not gonna mail it in, we're just gonna keep working until it eventually happens. And, you know, I think that's really brought us closer together. And I mean, that's a conversation, unfortunately, we've had multiple times after the playoffs about not giving up and, you know, just wanting to get right back in the fight the next season. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of those guys for, for playing and not giving up. I've got to wonder, the, the loss in game five, you know, for the fans, mm -hmm. it's like those doubts are creeping in again. We have seen this movie before. You're human. Do those doubts creep into your mind? And, and how do you put them at bay if they did? It's only natural at times to, to have those emotions, whether it's, you know, you're overly confident after winning a game or, you know, those doubts come in after losing a game. But, you know, I think it's, it's, it's a great thing because it's a team sport and it's a beautiful thing to talk to one another. And I think that's really what brings you back down to earth. You know, whether you're too high or too low, you're able to be around one another and just establish that, you know, you're still up in the series, you're going on the road with a chance to win. And, you know, the noise is there for sure, but, you know, with our group and our experience, you know, I think when we have those conversations together, we're able to kind of equal it out and, you know, keep ourselves in the moment. Now you face a Florida Panthers team that did the impossible. What was going through your mind mm -hmm. watching that overtime, game seven? Yeah, I mean, it was a great game. And as a player, you kind of have the mindset that the team that wins that playoff series will be the better team. So it's really not important who it is. But, you know, I'd be lying if, if, if I didn't say I was surprised. Um, obviously, if you look at the year the Bruins had, they were an outstanding team and to see Florida come out on top. Uh, but that's what, that's what playoff hockey is. There's upsets like that all the time. So, you know, for us, it doesn't really change much other than the travel. So for us, we just have to, you know, refocus. You know, it's a new challenge ahead. We're really looking forward to it. You know, we're confident, we're excited, and, um, you know, it's a great time to be playing hockey still. You pick him, I might try to skate it in. Okay, I'm gonna end on this. You're now 29 years old. You're a grizzled veteran. You're, mm -hmm. you're engaged to be married. Mm -hmm. When you think back though, to your draft day, mm -hmm. 2012, that fresh faced kid. Yeah. Would you have any advice for him? What would you say to him? I think the only advice I would give would just be to not get discouraged by anything along the way. You know, whether it be playoff losses or injuries or you know, regular season losses, the challenges that come are, are, are all gonna be building towards something. So take them and, you know, learn from them, use them as motivation and um, just keep working. But, you know, like you said, I'm 29, but I got, I got a lot of hockey left to play and I got a lot of lessons to learn still along the way. And, you know, that's part of the journey and that's what makes it so fun. And that's why, you know, our guys feel so fortunate to be in this position.